Hi everyone, my name is Julie and today we're traveling to probably the most mysterious region of Europe where the Pyrenees mountains meet the Atlantic Ocean, Kaisho, and welcome to the Basque language. So many people have tried to solve the mystery of Basque, but the more we learn about it, the more questions appear. Let's start with some numbers though. The Basque language, or Euskara, is mostly spoken in the Basque country, which itself sits inside two countries. There is the French Basque country and the Spanish Basque country, which comprises provinces of Gipuzkoa, Vizcaya and Alaba, which are reunited in a Basque autonomous community where the Basque language has an official status, and Navarra. There are 3 million people who live in the entire Basque country 2.1 million in the Basque Autonomous Community, 600,000 in Navarra and 300,000 in the French Basque Country. From these 3 million, around 800,000 claim to speak Basque fluently and 200,000 understand it to some degree. Virtually all Basques are also fluent in the language of their country, French or Spanish respectively. There are five main dialects, which are not that well mutually intelligible, and the standard version, called Batua, developed in the 1960s, that is like an intermediate version between the dialects. So this is where the Basque language is spoken. But what is Basque exactly? In this video I'm going to repeat all the time the phrase nobody knows. Nobody knows where the Basque language comes from. Nobody knows what other languages it is connected to. Nobody knows how Basque managed to survive and so on. Basque is so puzzling because it is in the middle of Western Europe, completely surrounded by the sea of Indo-European languages and yet it looks nothing like any of those languages. So what is it, you would ask? Well, linguists have been asking the same exact question for decades, if not for centuries, but but without convincing answers. But we can still outline three main hypotheses. Hypothesis number one. Basque is connected to other ancient languages of Spain, like the Iberian, of which we don't know much, as just a handful of inscription has been found. The only problem with this theory is when the Iberian writings were in the process of being deciphered, Basque language was not helpful at all, which has led to think that the two languages might not actually be related. Hypothesis number two. Basque has a connection to the Afro-Asiatic languages, like Semitic, Egyptian or Berber. There are striking similarities in some of the basic vocabulary, so for some researchers it proves genetic relationship. And hypothesis number three, probably a more popular one. Basque has a distant relationship to the North Caucasian languages. Apparently, some basic vocabulary and some grammatical structures, like the ergative case, exhibit so many similarities that it could not be simply a coincidence. Most of the common words concern the farming vocabulary, but none of the metals, which suggest that this Basque North Caucasian people knew agriculture but split before they started working with metals. Then some researchers group both of these in the immense Dini Caucasian macrofamily which includes Basque, North Caucasian, Burushaski, Yeniseyan, Sino-Tibetan and Nadini. But if such relationship really existed, it would be extremely distant and difficult to prove with certainty. But it is just crazy to think that Basque and Native American languages could be related. Crazy in a good sense, of course. Apart from linguistics, we can also use genetics and archaeology to help us figure out what was going on there. It has been known for a long time that Basque people had a distinct gene pool, and it has been supposed that Basques were the last direct descendants of the first European hunter-gatherers. But the latest genetic findings suggest that Basque genes, for its most part, come from the Neolithic farmers, who were the first to bring agriculture to Europe 
Europe and who spread all over the Mediterranean. This could be confirmed by archaeology. Around 5000 BC, an agricultural culture started spreading from Anatolia, displacing local hunter-gatherers. And Basques may be the last direct descendants of these first European farmers. But if they were speaking a language similar to North Caucasian or an Afroasiatic language or something close to the Iberian language or even something else is still not entirely clear. The ancient history of Basque is obscure, but it becomes clearer and clearer once we approach our era. The first published book was the collection of poems from 1545 entitled Linguae Vasconum Primitae by Bernard Echepar. But Basque also possesses a very interesting oral poetry tradition. Bercholaritza is a singing poetry improvisation. A poet or a bercholari has to come up with a poem on a given theme that is in rhyme and in rhythm and at the same time that responds to the previous bercholari. It's like a traditional Basque rap battle, but different. No one knows how old this tradition is, but it is still practiced on all the levels, from friendly gatherings to national competitions that attract thousands of people. Banya nereza tshua, dubu versho ginza, versho apaliza, shuva ten baldinza, pist de sarun itza, alaitus visitza, emen shuorem vueltan danzan gabilza. And the winner is awarded with a chapella or the winner's beret. And actually, the word for champion, chapeldun, literally means one who has the beret. In the 20th century, though, the survival of Basque was under a big threat. Between 1938 and 1978, during Franco regime, speaking Basque was made illegal and considered treason. After this period ended, there has been a revival and a growing interest in Basque language and culture, and there is still a slow fluent speaker growth every year in the Spanish Basque country, but not in the French Basque country, where the language does not have an official status and the speaker number is falling. Time will show what will happen next to Basque, but for now, let's learn about it in more details. As I said before, there are five big dialects of Basque and they can differ in pronunciation rules, but here we are going to explore Batua, or the standardized version. Basque is written with the Latin script and for its most part it is phonetic. There are 27 letters, but five of them are rare and used only in loanwords. H is always silent, only in some dialects it could be read. The J also has several pronunciation versions, and it can get a bit scary if you look at the dialect versions of this letter, but in the standard Basque, most of the times it will be Y or H, depending on the speaker. Now let's see these three letters together. Z is pronounced like S, X is pronounced like SH, and S is something in between, SH. Consequently, these diphthongs will have the same gradation, S, CH and CH. Also, if an L or an N goes after an I, it softens, like in Ikurinya, which is the name of the Basque flag. Yeah, Basque flag has a name. Basque doesn't like to have an initial R, so it adds a vowel before it, like in Irrati, radio. Basque also doesn't like consonant clusters, so Libra or Cristiano become Liburu and Giristino, and that for sure gives some musicality to Basque. We have heard examples of Bercho already, and now let's hear some more of the language. Aipatu duzu lotura handia duzula atortxukoekin, urte asko hemen jotzen, eta gainera kantuan ere, atortxuko kantu ezagunean, parto hartu zen nuen berezia, ez? Bai, orain dela, zen bat, amaika urte izan zen hori, edo amar. Ekonekin egin genuen, baina jende pila bat, eh? Komako abeslaria, eseakoa, eh, gobernors, noski, ni, pf, bueno, jende pila bat, eta bestia oso oso berezia dan eretzako, bere bai. Askoren ustez gainera, hain garapen ez den garapen bat. Ze garai hartan ja, 
e, jende askok bereziki alderdi komunistatik kritika handiak egin zituen e, basaterako gara hartan oso ezagun egin ziren, ba Bernard Gilevi, Glucksmann eta e, horrelako intelektualenak, ez? I really can't think of any language that would sound similar to Basque. What is your opinion? But for now, brace yourselves as we're going to talk about Basque grammar. I've explored a few languages already on this channel and the grammar of Basque was, so far, the most complicated to understand, even though Navajo comes very close. A typical Basque sentence puts its word in a completely reverse order of what English would do. Basque is agglutinative, which means that what English does with prepositions, Basque does with prefixes and suffixes. Even definite articles are attached. What makes Basque stand out from the crowd is its ergativity. In Europe, we only find this feature in some languages of Caucasus. Ergativity means that a subject can have two forms. For example, in European languages that have cases, like Latin, the subject can only be in nominative case. But in Basque, the subject can have two possible cases. Nominative, if it is followed by an intransitive verb, or in ergative, if it is followed by a transitive verb. In both cases, the subject is I, but in the second case, there is a direct object, the dog. So I is in ergative and the dog is in nominative. This can be literally translated as something like the dog is seen by me. Ergativity is already quite of a paradigm shift, but wait, you haven't seen the Basque verb yet. This table represents all of the possible forms of just one verb, to be. The verb form in Basque changes not only depending on the mood or tense, it also accords with the person and the number of the subject, of the direct object, and even of the indirect object. Here in Paperak Ekari Diski Suet, I brought you the papers, the verb is formed by first looking at the word in the nominative case, here it is the papers, third person plural, so we pick Diski. Then we look at the indirect object, to you, second person plural, so we pick Sue, and finally the ergative subject, which is I, first person singular, so we pick T. Was this little operation complicated enough? And I remind you, you have different combinations for every mood, tense and sentence structure. In fact, this system is so unconceivably complicated that even Basques themselves only use the complete conjugation for around a dozen of basic verbs, like to be, to do, to go, etc. Most of the other verbs are conjugated as compound verbs. That means that the base verb is not changing forms, it can only have three of them perfect, imperfect, and future. I'm sure if you decide to learn Basque, you will find even more surprising features in its grammar. But for now, we're going to move on to the vocabulary. Basque, as I said it many times already, is completely surrounded by Indo-European languages, and it has managed to survive for quite a long time. However, it was impossible to completely resist the influence of these languages. Since the Roman Empire, Indo-European words have been constantly entering Basque. Later loanwords from other Roman languages, especially from Spanish, are numerous, and you will hardly find a phrase without one. Loanwords from Basque in other languages are obviously rare and are encountered for its most part in Spanish. Words like izquierda, left, from esquer, or aquelarre, which sabbat. Similar to French or Celtic languages, Basque has a vigesimal counting system, so 91 is technically 4 times 20 and 11. Actually, the word for Basque person in Basque is Euskaldun, which literally means Basque speaker. So technically it means that by learning Basque, you're also becoming a Basque. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, especially to the top tier who picked this language and are choosing the next one. And for everybody else, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.